Let's go over the labeling of the greenhouse diagram. So your diagram here has the components of this house, and we're going to label the things that are on here. So we're on Kami, and if your document ends up being flipped, um, you can go up here to the menu, and you can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise if your copy when it loads into Kami is not um, the right direction. All right, so that's just a little hint on the menu. All right, so we have here our greenhouse. We're going to make some annotations on it to label some of these items. So the first thing that we're going to label up here is our um, skylight. So this is natural lighting through skylights up here. So that's one thing a greenhouse will do, and this will reduce energy costs because you get natural light and you don't have to turn on a light. So we're going to add that and we're going to add a shape. We're going to add a line to point it to here, the skylight like that. All right. So then Next, I'm going to add another text box and I'm going to label these. You guys have seen these before. So these are our photovoltaic cells. So you probably know them as, <clears throat> let me move it so you can see a little bit um, here. So you know them as solar panels. And so the real name is photovoltaics. So let me expand this out so you can see as I type. So photovoltaic um, cells slash solar panels. So the nickname is solar panels. The AP test used to never um, call them solar panels. They used to always say photovoltaic cells, but um, nowadays they will call them solar panels because that's just the name that everybody knows. They've become more common. So that's what these are here and over here. So we drew our lines with the shape. All right, another text box over here for a solar water heater. And so this one is something that you may have at home. Solar water heater. And what it is, is it's tubes of water or... Um, well, this would be water if it's a solar water heater. There's also solar heaters that use a chemical like antifreeze in really cold locations. And it's so there's these tubes that go up and down. And um, for a water heater, they use this big surface area. So there's there are tubes that fill up with water. And then when you turn on the shower, that hot water goes to the shower. Um, in other types of solar heating, it will be, a, it could be a chemical, and that chemical then is sent in pipes to heat your house through the walls. So the pipes heat the walls um, with the hot um, liquid. But we'll just call this one a solar water heater. And so there's, there's similar apparatus, that's why I talk about it. Um, so you'll learn about solar, um, active solar um, heaters, which is different than a solar water heater, but they are both along in the same categories of active solar. All right, so that would be a solar water heater here. So you could use the power of the sun instead of natural gas to heat the water for your um, home. All right, and then over here, you see that this house has overhangs. And so a greenhouse uses overhangs and this is something that is they should do more of this in california and other hot places they should have overhangs they used to on older houses they'll have overhangs um, to shade windows um, in the summer and some of the older houses that you see in LA that were built before 1950s um, have them because they didn't have air conditioning back then. But since the invention of air conditioning, they don't do it very much. But now people want to be more energy conscious. So they do do um, overhangs to help with energy. All right, so those are overhangs like that. 
Here next to the bathroom, you can see the dancing toilet paper and poop, which I thought could be something a little fun here. Um, we have um, low flow showers and toilets. So bathrooms use low flow toilets and showers. All right, so that is a feature of a greenhouse here, okay. All right, down here you see this barrel and barrels are used to collect water. So we have rain barrel collects rain water for landscaping. And um, so these usually in places where there's mosquitoes will have a screen at the top so the mosquitoes can't lay their eggs and stuff in there, but it will collect. So usually it's down drain pipes and there's not a picture here of drain pipes, but basically the drain pipes along the roof of your house will then feed it into the rain barrel. And then um, you can scoop out water or some of them have a spigot that you can then water your plants for landscaping. You can use them around here in Santa Clarita. You're not going to get much except in the rainy season, but hey, it's still a great water saving device to use. All right, kind of going around here in clockwise down here at the bottom. I just have a paint can because that was kind of the only place I had left in the picture to place it because we're going to fill in some other parts over here and I'm going to expand my text box. So when you paint, it's best to buy low VOC paints. And VOC stands for Volatile Organic Chemical that you'll learn more about um, when we study air pollution. Um, they're pretty easy to find now. When I first started teaching this course 15 years ago, you had to specially look for them at the paint store, the hardware store, wherever you buy paint. Um, but now most paints are VOC free or low VOC and that's just because um, it's much healthier when you're painting your house on the inside or out, you don't want to breathe in too many of the fumes. So let's talk about our kitchen here. So in the kitchen we have Energy Star appliances. So they're a special rating from the US government, you if your appliance doesn't use as much energy as um, other appliances um, in the same category, then you can get an Energy Star rating. So we have our dishwasher, I'm sorry, our uh, refrigerator, there's our dishwasher. I mean, also you have Energy Star washers and dryers and ovens and things like that as well. They cost a little more, but in the life of your appliance, it usually pays off with energy savings. You don't pay as much in your energy bill, your electric bill or your gas bill when you have Energy Star appliances. So in the living room here, and actually in all rooms of the house, we need to have energy efficient lighting like LED lights or fluorescence. Now these are in place of the old incandescent bulbs. So LED bulbs, um, fluorescent bulbs, they use a lot more, I'm sorry, a lot less energy, like much, much less energy than the regular old incandescent light bulbs. So um, you can draw some lines here um, to these lights right there, but also, in a lot of other rooms, you're going to have your lights appear in the bedroom and you can replace them with energy efficient lights. And even up here in the kitchen, the big lights up there in the kitchen, you can replace your lighting. Ha now, some of you are like, hey, I do a lot of these things. We have Energy Star appliances, our light bulbs, we have LEDs, we have low flow showers. So you guys are on a great start. Some of you have solar panels and some skylights. So you're on a really good start to um, having a greenhouse. All right. Um, 
Next, we have some bushes down here and they just represent landscaping in general. So I'm just going to have it here. Um, landscaping with native plants is important. Um, so in Santa Clarita, if we have native plants, they're going to use naturally less water because they're adapted to our climate and they're not, they are adapted to not needing as much water. So you don't need as much water. So it reduces irrigation. And if you have native plants, no matter where you live, you don't have to use as much chemical pesticides and fertilizers on them because they're adapted to your climate, to your bugs, etc. So planting with native plants anywhere you are, um, and there's can be really beautiful ones. It doesn't have to look like the ugly hills. Your house um, landscapers that plant native plants, they pick the most beautiful ones um, for landscaping and they look really, really nice. All right, um, over here, let's draw a couple of lines to represent a driveway. I know the car is going in the wrong direction for the driveway, but if we have a couple of lines that go down representing the driveway of the house, and yeah, I know the car is in the wrong direction in the garage, but we're going to um, talk here about um, porous pavement. So, pavement, let me move this to the right direction, asphalt and concrete are not good for water retention. They run off into the gutters and the gutters take it to wherever. If you live near the coast, they take it right to the ocean. So you're saving, you're losing all that rainwater. Um, for Santa Clarita, it takes it to our river and then it soaks in the river there. So we don't actually lose that water, but you could save it for your um, plants. So underground, if rainwater is allowed to soak through your driveway, that water can uh, water your surrounding plants, your trees and your landscaping. So what do we mean by soak through? So there are engineered porous pavement. And you can, um, if you want to know more about it, you can Google search porous pavement, but in your driveways and walkways. Um, and it, it's to allow water to seep through it. So it's hard enough for your car to drive on, but it actually lets water soak through it to recharge your groundwater, your aquifers, and to let it seep and water your plants. All right, so porous pavement in driveways and walkways to allow water to seep in. All right, next one. I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit here. It's a little bit hard to see. I should have zoomed in earlier. There we go. All right, so next one is a text box here by the tree. So this tree is a little bit not to scale. That's a very, very short tree. The tree should be a lot taller. But if this tree is deciduous, so you should know deciduous means the leaves fall off in the winter. But what they can do is they can shade the home in the summer and allow light in the winter. So when the leaves fall off the trees, you don't really need the tree for shade, but then light can come through and um, naturally light your house, um, naturally let in sunlight to heat your house during the cold winters. Um, and so deciduous trees are very valuable around your house. Again, this one should be really tall, but it's not over here. Um, so it's not to scale. All right, um, then we can put in insulation. So I'm just gonna kind of put it up here near the roof line. So usually in a roof somewhere, people have insulation in the attic. 
and walls. So insulation in the attic and walls will help retain heat and cool. And then you don't lose as much and you don't have to spend as much money on your electric bill or your natural gas bill. So in many of our homes, our heater is natural gas and our lights and refrigerators and stuff is electricity. So our air conditioners run on electricity and our heaters run on natural gas. Now that's some people have heaters that run on electricity as well. Um, but uh, most people have natural gas heaters. Okay. Now for the last one, we're going to have a green roof here. So you'll notice that the color is green, but I have this kind of outside showing you it's layered on top of the regular roof line. So this is a green roof. And what it does is it reduces runoff um, from the roof onto the ground. Um, it insulates and absorbs CO2. I don't know on Cami if I can make a little two for CO2. The green roof, um, we can draw some things. So this one shows it over the garage. But a green roof can be anywhere. So it can't be where your solar panels are, your skylights, um, or your water heater. So that's why I didn't put it up here. But you can have a green roof in a lot of places. It kind of works a little bit better on flat land. So if this was a flatter roof, it would work a little bit better. What could be here? Well, um, you can have um, grass, just regular grass. And we can draw some grass. Some of you are much better at drawing on cami than me. That is a terrible drawing. I don't even know what I'm drawing right here. Um, in some places, like some buildings, not really houses, but in some office buildings or apartment buildings, the roofs are flat and they will have a vegetable garden up at the top of that roof. Um, so that's pretty cool. So these are green roofs. Um, and they're pretty cool. We don't have very many around here, but in places they have them and if you can visit them, they're pretty amazing. I know big cities like New York, some of the apartment buildings and commercial buildings for offices and stuff are putting them at the top of those buildings. And then people will buy the fruits and vegetables that are grown there from urban farmers. All right, so this is our green building design. So make sure that you submit it when you are finished. And you can add more touches. You can add some little bugs or some flowers or whatever before you turn it in if you want to.